governors. I'm excited to welcome you this morning to Westminster Week as we put the final preparations in place for our Master's Agility Championship, our Master's Obedience Championship, and for the 144th Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. For our entire history, New York has been our home for the show. From the early days at P.T. Barnum's Hippodrome to today's glorious spectacle at Madison Square Garden, New York and Westminster have hosted dog lovers from all over the world at the ultimate dog show event. We are thankful for our partnership with the city and trust that everyone will be looking up at the Empire State Building on Tuesday night to see Westminster purple and gold lighting up the Manhattan skyline. We have so much exciting news to share today. First, our show chairman, Dave Helming, will provide an overview of our event schedule for this year. Then our own Gail Middlebeicher will offer some historic context as our show powers into a new decade. Gail will also be sharing exciting watch party ideas for all of the Westminster fans around the world. Finally, Paul Campanella, Westminster's Director of Companion Events, will run an exciting agility demonstration. You can see back there the green carpet waiting for us. Thank you all for being here today. Please take some time when you get the chance to visit our website to review some of the amazing history that the club has been a part of and to learn more about Westminster's continuing efforts with its many wonderful partners to support dog health, to encourage responsible ownership, and to showcase the power of loving companionship. And we look forward to seeing you at the show. Thanks very much. Dave Helming. Thanks, Chad, and good morning, all. We're almost here, ready to roll again. We are here to celebrate Westminster Week. As Chad mentioned, it's the 144th annual Westminster Dog Show. It's the fifth annual Masters Obedience Championship, and we have our seventh annual Masters Agility Championship, so all kinds of things. I just want to point out all of these events focus around the dogs and the exhibitors. This is where our focus is, and doing the best we can to make it the greatest show we can. And this year on Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we will have the confirmation show at Pier 94, and it's going to have over about 2,600 dogs in it, all champions. And they're actually coming from 49 states and 19 other countries, so it's a very, very diversified group from all over. And they're all going to be vying for the top honor, best in show, which will be given out in Madison Square Garden on Tuesday evening at about 10.50, if we're on schedule. Uh, additionally, uh, another highlight of our show is our juniors competition. We have a, over 100 juniors competing, and these juniors are really good. In order to qualify for Westminster, they've had to go on best in show from a junior perspective throughout the year, and they are very, very good. And they, again, will compete, and the top junior will be crowned on Tuesday night at, at the Garden also. Uh, it's always exciting, and the club supports our junior program and we give $24,000 out to scholarships to support the winners, which is good. Our Masters Obedience Championship will be held on Sunday, and pre before that on Saturday will be our Masters Annual uh, Agility Annual Championship. We have over 300 dogs entered, and Paul Campanella, our Director of, Communication, uh, Director of Companion Events, will talk about that shortly, about it. Let me tell you a little bit more about some changes in the show this year. For those that you were there before, we had Pier 92, we had Pier 94. Uh, the city shut down 92 about a year ago. It's not open, so we're all in Pier 94 this year, which prompted us making some logistical changes. And as such, we changed the confirmation part, which we used to be Monday and Tuesday. Now it's Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. We have 2,500 dogs enter. They're all champions, which is about as many champions as we had last year, shown in two days. So we'll have a little lighter uh, each day will be from 800 to 1,000 dogs over those three periods. And I said before, they're all champions, and the top competitors come from all over the country on that. Um, we're fortunate this year. The show will continually be benched. We haven't changed anything logistically as far as the benching area and as far as our rings go. And the key part of the show is the bench area where spectators can come and meet these breeds, talk to breeders, talk to handlers, talk to exhibitors, and be educated. And that's a a very important part of having a bench show, certainly. This year, of the 205 American Kennel Club recognized breeds or varieties, we have 204, so we're only missing one, which isn't bad at all. There is one new breed, the Azawak, which Gail will talk about uh, very soon. We have an international panel of judges, 31 of them, and they're gonna be judging all these dogs to the standard for each breed, which is approved by the American Kennel Club, and that's where the competition comes. 
And this year we've split it up, as I mentioned, three, three days. On Sunday we'll be all herding and hound breeds. On Monday will be the terrier, non-sporting and toy breeds, followed on Tuesday with the big guys, the working breeds and sporting breeds. Our schedule in MSG has not changed. The groups are still Monday and Tuesday night with Best in Show on Tuesday night. Our Best in Show judge this year is a fellow named Bob Slay, very distinguished man who has a history in the sport for over 50 years. He's been a judge. He has 40 years of experience being a judge. He's a retired naval officer. Uh, he's a retired vice president of the American Kennel Club and a few other things, and he's, he's done a lot. This will be Bob's eighth assignment at, at Westminster. Previously, he's done both the herding and working groups, so we're very happy to do that. We're having good television coverage again from Fox, uh, Fox Sports on Sunday night on FS1 is gonna be our Masters Agility Championship, which is actually done on Saturday, but we've had tremendous interest in that, and that'll be coming out on Sunday night. Monday and Tuesday afternoon from the piers on FS2, we're gonna have two hours live of breed judging, and all the judging, all four days is gonna be streamed live too, so it's gonna be available out there. Uh, Monday and Tuesday nights from MSG, from 7 to 11, this will all be on FS1. It'll be a pre-show pre at 7 o'clock. The actual group judging and best in show start at 7.30 on Monday and Tuesday night. So we have a lot going on. Uh, so we're very happy to have, obviously, have Fox on board. Another group is our Perina Pro Plan, who sponsors the, the show. Jim Allen, I know you're here somewhere. Thank you, Jim, again, very much. They're such an important part of what we do every year. And we've got a week of top dogs, breeders, handlers, exhibitors, juniors, and that's why we call ourselves America's Dog Show. So we look forward to your help on the show and being part of it. Now I'd like to turn it back to, over to Gail, who's our Director of Communications. Gail? Thank you, Dave. Many are calling this new decade, the Roaring Twenties. And to kick it off, Westminster is taking a look back at the best in show breeds of the original Roaring Twenties, and we're gonna be introducing a new breed. The 1920s represented many changes in dog shows, including the rise of American bred dogs. In 1924, American dog shows, including Westminster, saw the establishment of the modern day group judging with all group winners vying for best in show. We have some of the breeds that won Best in Show in the Roaring Twenties with us today. The decade began in 1920 with a Wire Fox Terrier, Wide Collar Boy, capturing his second Best in Show win, his first in 1917. This breed went on to win 15 Best in Shows, with the most recent in 2019 by King. Today we have Ragnar representing the Wire Fox Terriers and the past winners of that breed. Okay, that's good. And in 1921, the Cocker Spaniel, a party color, American bred, named Seductive, took top honors and won the iconic James A. Mortimer Trophy for the best American bred dog, which we have on display here today. This award helped highlight domestically bred dogs when most purebreds were still imported from Europe. Today, we have Ice, representing those Cockers of the past. In 1922, the Airedale Barkentine went from the novice class to best in show, from canine obscurity to the throne of American dogdom, according to the New York Times. He was also an American bred and was from Boston. Today we have Sailor joining us. All dogs will be coming back out for a group shot. In 1925, a pointer, champion Governor Moscow, became the first pointer to win Best in Show, even though a cl the club's emblem had been a pointer for nearly 50 years. Oh, turn them around, please. <laughs> a writer penned, the gods of art combined to bring before the human eye the perfect statue of a living dog. This is Jewel. To wrap up the Roaring Twenties, in 1929, the year the New, York, New Yorker Hotel was built, 
The Collie champion Laud Loyalty of Bellhaven won Best in Show at Westminster. He was the youngest ever to win Best in Show, and he was nine months old on the day of his big win. Today we have Diori representing that winner. Now, a hundred years later, we have a new breed debuting at Westminster. The Oswak. Today we have Sunny and Bahir. Tall and elegant, the Oswak was originally from West African nations of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. This slender sighthound is a short, fine coat which comes in any color or color combinations. A trusted guardian and hunter of hare, antelope, and wild boar, he became a constant traveling companion of des desert roaming nomads. This durable breed is very fast outdoor and excels at the sport of lure coursing. Yet indoors, the Oswak is a calm indoor family companion. There are six Oswaks entered at Westminster this year, and the best of breed winner will join the hound group on Tuesday night at Madison Square Garden. Just stay a minute, they're taking pictures. Okay. Oh, you can go that, you can go back that way, that's fine. Oh, you're staying. Oh, okay. Yep, and now we will do a photo. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get them all up here. Just try and line up the face. Yep. Maybe the pointer is Holly in front, down on the floor. Yep. It's always incredible to think about these breeds that we're showing in the 1800s are still competing today. And that's because of the dedicated preservation breeders who make sure the next generation of healthy sound dogs reach our sofas. bring the Oswalks back out front in just a second so you can get the Oswalks uh, another clean out of them. Great. Okay. How about the Roy Roy dogs go back and we'll let the Oswalks come back up front. An interesting aspect of the Oswak breed is that they're taller than they are long, and that's important in the job there to perform. A lot of legs there. Mm -hmm.
Prohibition was in full swing during the Roaring Twenties, and many dogs were named in opposition to Prohibition, such as Bootlegger, who won Best in Show in, 20, in 1924. There were others, such as Tom Collins, Homebrew, and Eggnog. In a nod to the repeal of the 18th Amendment, the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show is proud to introduce the Sensation Cocktail, crafted with Aviation American Gin. American Gins disappeared with Prohibition, but today the aviation brand from Portland, Oregon is leading its category with owner Ryan Reynolds clearing the path. Mm -hmm. The Sensation Cocktail is the perfect companion for your garden watch party. Enjoy this cocktail as you and your dog-loving friends watch the Westminster Dog Show live on FS1 on Monday and Tuesday evenings, Feb 10th through 11, or when you tune in for the new one-hour Westminster Highlight Show presented by Purina... Pro Plan, which is airing on the Fox Broadcasting Network on February 23rd. We have samples of the cocktail here, and you're all more than welcome to take a little sip. Uh, as a fun addition to your watch party, you can have your friends also follow along the live broadcast to see if their selections of the Purina Pro Plan Million Dollar Dog Show Bracket Challenge come out on top. You have to predict the seven winning the winning breeds of the seven groups and best in show correctly. So fill out your brackets today at dogshowbracket.com. So far, over 120,000 submissions have been made, and that's surpassing the 2019 total submissions. So there's a lot of competition out there in the bracket challenge, but it only all you have to get is eight picks correct. Brackets can be submitted until Monday, February 10th at 5 p.m. Eastern. Next, I'd like to introduce Paul Campanella, the Director of Companion Events for the Westminster Kennel Club. He's going to take us through the agility demo on the green carpet. We're fortunate today to have two, the two past Master Agility Champions here today as part of the demonstration. That's Verb and Famous. So this will be really fast, fast action. So we can move over to the other side. You can grab the beverage if you want a little nip.
championship course will be a hybrid year earlier round since four is the time to beat, whereas the first goal will set the baseline time for subsequent competitors, and ultimately a Masters Agility Champion will be awarded. In keeping with Westminster's tradition of giving back to the sport, this year's winners will be awarded a total of $10,000 to donate in their names to the AKC Agility Training Club of their choice or the AKC Humane Fund. As we continue to encourage the youth to participate in the sport of dogs, once again we'll be supporting the AKC's Junior Open World Agility Championship team with a $5,000 donation. So today we have the 2018 and the 2019 Masters Agility Champions with us. With um, first dog up to the guest. With Famous, this is the 2018 winner. Verb is nine and a half years old. So it just goes to show that these dogs can work this up until 10, 11, 12. <laughs> guys, just back up a little bit because you can have these guys right in your face. Yes. 
<laughs> so cute. You're drooling on your friend. <laughs>
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Get good with their their pets, you know. Oh, absolutely. And socialize for an early age. Oh, yeah. Fire says handled quite a bit by many different strangers just to get them used to it. And you know that really helps in the show because the dogs are handled in the show ring. But it really helps if you're taking your pet to be groomed. Mm -hmm.